implementing and verifying EIGRP. See, it means configuration. Um, but again, I'm telling you, EIGRP is a big protocol. If you know only to implement, like CCNA level, I know how to configure EIGRP. If you will say that, it means that you want a car and and you you know how to start the car and you say you know to drive the car that's very bad starting the car is not driving the car starting the car is just starting driving takes a lot of learning you need to understand traffic understand signal to understand the the gearbox you can understand the three or two parents in different countries. It is two. So you need to know what is where to apply clutch, and the accelerator on the brake, the steering wheel. So a lot of things are there. Similarly, enabling EIGRP just configuring, enabling EHGRP as a routing protocol is just a basic. You, you just start the protocol. The protocol will definitely give you routes, you will be able to ping, those things are fine, but you also need to do a lot of tuning. So, EHRP is also a big chapter. We have done only one, only one chapter. At least another five chapters will come. Let's see what is there in the fifth, second chapter. After this, we will be running EHRP successfully, but that is not all. So EHRP works only when you have autonomous system assigned. See, what is autonomous system? Grouping, grouping routers is an autonomous system. All the routers belong to same group, same number. Same group, same number. All the routers that belong to same group. The group is identified by a number called autonomous system number. So this group of routers only can form neighbor and then share the routes and learn the routes. So any destination outside EIGRP group, outside EIGRP autonomous system will not be learned because it's obvious it's another autonomous system. Now, in an organization, we will not have more than one autonomous system. Whatever the big autonomous, whatever the big organization it may be, you will have one autonomous system because it's only one office. But for for some reason, you have let's say let's say you want to have two autonomous system in one office which will not be necessary, but in case if there is a need, valid reason, you can very well do that by giving different number. If I have 20 routers, I will give 10 routers a number, another 10 routers another number. In that way, these two will be a group within an office, two groups. What if you want to communicate between these two groups? Then you can redistribute. What is redistributing? As the word says, re, repeat. The distribution. Take the route from one autonomous system and redistribute to another. And from another, redistribute to this. This is what called us merging to autonomous system. 
But instead of merging, what I will recommend is better change the routers with the same autonomous system. If you want to merge to autonomous system, why? Simple, very simple word. Merge it by giving same autonomous system number instead of different autonomous system number and then redistributing it, merge it. So when we go redistribution, we learn those things now. <coughs> we need to have a number. And that number, you need not to buy from someone. You can use anything. If I use 10, which means this router belongs to autonomous system 10. And if I know if, if I want the neighbor router to share routes with me, then I need to provide the same number 10 when I configure the neighbor router. So router EHGRP and then the number. Puts this router into that autonomous system 10. See the second paragraph says that all the routes in the internet work that must exchange EIGRP routing update must have the same autonomous system number. So not only to exchange EIGRP routing update, first of all to form neighbor itself should be in same autonomous system number. Only after forming neighbor any update can be shared. So in order to form neighbor, the routers need to be in same autonomous system. And the networks that you have on the, on the local router, same like what we saw in RIP, here also we say network. And let's say you want to run EIGRP or a router. Please understand this. 10.1.0.0 slash 16 is on this link. 10.2.0.0 slash 16 on this link. 10.3.0.0 slash 16 on this link. So we are not having same network. We have three different network. We got three different network here, but you do not want to advertise all three of them. Assume that you do not want to advertise all three of them to this router. R1 and R2, they are in same autonomous system, but you do not want, you do not want to advertise this to. You don't want to advertise this to. In that case, what you can say is network 10 dot 3.0.0 and you can use the wildcard mask. If you don't use the wildcard mask when you when you hit enter, it will take class full, meaning EHRP will be running on every interface that is having 10. So all these three will be advertised. But I told you you don't want to advertise this too. In that case, use the wildcard mask. Meaning what? You need to exactly say how many bits to match. Like this, 0 0.0.255.255, .0 .255, you know? When you do like this, you see the first two octet is zero, which means this first two octet should match in order to run EIGRP. So this is the only interface in which EIGRP will be running. We call this as wildcard mask. Wildcard mask zero means the bits need to match. Because I put zero zero in two octaves, it means that the two octaves on the interface should be 10 dot three according to my example here. 
10.3. So EAGRP will be running only on this interface. So it will advertise only this to this guy, not this one and this one. We don't have this concept of using wildcard mask and doing filtering so easily like this in RIP. In RIP, to, to achieve this, you need to write a filter list using some access list, which we'll be seeing later, the filter list we'll see later. So now what I'm saying is, filtering route that belongs to same network but different subnet is very easy here in EIGRP. You need to simply write wildcard mask. Whichever matches will be advertised. Others will get filtered. Now we saw the metric of EIGRP is calculated using bandwidth and delay. If you will have a link whose bandwidth is 1000 meg, in order to make that path worst, you can decrease the bandwidth if you want. So I told you the default bandwidth is 1000. There are two paths, let's assume. There are two paths to reach this internet. I'm just taking internet as an example, but EAGRP is a protocol that's supposed to work within an organization. But let's assume, you know, <coughs> okay, it need not to be an internet. Let me take the actual example. We should not simply talk something. The story may be okay, but it's not relevant to the real world. So let's take EGRP is one of the protocol that comes under the category called IGR, IGP. Interior gateway protocol meaning this protocol is only meant for within an organization, not not between up between autonomous systems, within within a company, not between companies. So let us take this router one has got multiple paths to reach this router in your organization here. It need not to be an internet. This is another destination in your organization. So if you see to reach R4, you've got two paths. And now you want this to be the primary path and this to be the secondary path. But problem is by default, both will be seen in the routing table and both will be primary. Both will be primary because the cost is same to reach R1 from, from R1 to R4, to reach R4 from R1, you have path by R2 to R3, but to, to make one path primary, Go to this path, another path, so you say, I was a sale earlier, I want this to be primary. All that I need to do is I need to go under this interface and say, bandwidth, maybe 800. Okay, the default is 1000 a year. More the bandwidth, less the metric is. So R1 will say now, this is the only route, primary route. And this will be seen only in the topology table. Only when the primary goes down from the topology table, the route will be updated to the routing table. So you manually can set the bandwidth lower than what 
it is you cannot increase if link bandwidth is 1000 and you cannot increase 2500 now but you can decrease by using the bandwidth command for for the tuning to to meet the requirement of the company your company needs only one path to be primary the other one to be backup so not only the bandwidth you can alter you can also alter the delay all right delay can also be altered if you want to increase more delay on path r3 you can do that so that r2 will be the primary but whenever we, we configure bandwidth or delay to make r3 path as a backup you need to also remember the feasibility condition if the advertised distance via R3 is not less than the successor value, then it won't be seen in the topology table. That is why we learned that those fundamentals are very important. You remember those six points, the six lines. Yes, sir. Wonderful. So may I ask you a question then from the previous chapter? Are you ready? Yes, sir. No, I'll try. <laughs> you will do it, I know. You know, I, the question is this. What is the successor value? Means. What does successor value mean? Uh, successor value will be the uh, cost from um, B to D mm -hmm. from source to the destination. Mm -hmm. See, uh, what do you say? Uh, what do you say is correct? But you're you're simply so, okay, okay. Try try. So basically, um, router A and router C will advert. Let's assume I have yeah, you've got R1, yes, R1 can go where R2 to R4. R1 can go yes. where R3 to R4. Yes. Now, both R2 and R3 is giving, advertising the metric that they got to reach the destination R4. Okay. Yes. Now, what is the successor value in R1? The successor value is the lowest feasible distance, isn't it? Yes. The lowest feasible distance. You have feasible distance via 2 as well as via 3. R3. What is feasible distance? The distance between R1 and R4 is the feasible distance. Yes. But you got two feasible distance via R2 yes. and R3. The lowest one yes. is what lowest FD is what called as successor value. Means that is the FD of the elected route, isn't it? Yeah, FD and successor is the same, isn't it, sir? If it is only one path, see. Okay. If I don't have this path, FD and successor will be seen because there is only one path. Right. Yes. Successor means what? The chosen one but yes in here it's not only one part you got two parts both yes path has got fd right yes so now how can i say both are uh, successor uh, when this bandwidth is only 800 okay so the one that has got the lowest one becomes the uh, successor this will be the successor more the bandwidth the the fd will be lower Yes. Right. Now, this is a small example. If you are enabling EAGRP in this router, in this router, I have 10.4, 10.1, and 170.16, and 170.16. Another one. Four, four links. And I want to run EAGRP in all four. So, simple I need to say is 
running HRP on the all interface that begins with 10. So it will run on these two interfaces. Then run EIGRP on all those interfaces that begins with 1716. As soon as I say 1716, it will start running on S2 and S3. S2 and S0. So you don't need to have four lines. You can simply have two lines and say what exactly we need to match. What we should not do is on RA, we should not advertise this network, which is in RB. It's not necessary. When you go to RB, you should you should advertise 192.168. But when you are in RA, do not think about the networks of RB. Whatever is in this router, that is what we need to advertise. We should not advertise the other routers network. Not correct. Do you have any question on this page? Um, so uh, the other one, after the network, the one that you uh, give uh, well, uh, before before we used to give the subnet mask, now it's net, what did you say? Wild card mask. Okay, so if you enter 10.1 network and then the 172, do you still have to give the no, uh, wild card not mask? Necessary. Not not necessarily. Okay. If you are just doing class full match, you know, if your aim is to match all the interface that runs 10 in the first update. So instead of saying 10.1, 10.4, you, you can say, if you find 10, run in, run EIGRP in that interface. So it will run on okay. both the interface. And if you okay. say, if you, if you see any 10.16 on any interface, on all those interfaces running edge up. Then it will start running on S1 and S2. Any other question? No, sir. So here is an example. Uh, as I said earlier, if you see an R R C router C, router C. We want to run EIGRP only on this link. We don't want to run on this link. Why? Because it is connected to internet. We will not be running EIGRP between our company and internet company. Because we don't want to do. EIGRP is an IGP protocol. That is only for those networks within our organization. We will not be advertising our network to others. We will, we will not be advertising our inside networks to ISP. Will you do it? No. Will you advertise all those networks that is there inside your home? No. It's not safe. Then, then the outsiders will start coming inside your network and then spoil. So we don't want to run EIGRP on S0 interface. How do we achieve it? We write wildcard mask. We say if you find 172.16.3 and 4, only then, you see, this means match exactly. How many zeros I have? Three, yes, sir. Which means you need to match exactly three. So this will be running on this and uh, zero. 16.4.0. So you will not see EIGRP running on this. There won't be any neighbor shape. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Whereas on router A and B, you do not want to filter any network. So you are saying here simply 16 if you find, then that interface should run EIGRP. So in router A, 1.0.16, this one, 1.0.16, this one, both will run EIGRP. Actually, they are what? They are slash 24. Everywhere it is slash 24. But you are saying if this two matches, if this two matches, if the 16 bit matches, that's enough for us. Wherever it matches, run EIGRP on that interface. Is it clear or very clear? Not clear. No, so it's clear. Okay, this is very important topic. 
but let's not get into this today. We will. So for, for testing on on each router, I need to add another network. Adding another network can be done by attaching a, a virtual link, a Lubeck interface. You are aware of Lubeck interface, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I remember I was talking about Lubeck in the early stage. So this is what I'm going to have Lubeck. One hundred one hundred one one slash thirteen. <clears throat> okay, so we'll configure the basic IP address first, then we'll start the GRP. On R1 interface, the bug zero IP address is 1011. Then interface F00. IP address is 10.12.0.1. Then interface F0 slash 1. 10.11.0.1. Let's verify show IP interface brief. You can see those two interfaces with IP address that we planned. Is configured. If you go down, you will also see Lubeck interface. You see. So in the routing table, I should see now three routes. See, show IP route. See only the connectors, okay? L means, you know, over the link. It means it's also connected. So you got 1111 on Lubeck 0, and this is 10.11. Dot zero dot one, which is on M zero one ten dot twelve. Actually, the routing table will show only the connected, but some version of operating system is designed to show even the address on the link. Address on the link is with the host portion, but in the routing table, you will you will see only the network portion. Router's job is to connect between networks. But as I said, in some operating systems like what I'm having now, we'll also have the link. Yeah, and um, in my packet tracer, it's it showing uh, connected and links. In links also, it will show you. Okay, it shows links also then similar, similar kind of operating system what I'm having is what runs there. Yeah, but ignore those yellow, okay? Routing table should have only the connected. It shows the IPs on the link itself. In the beginning days, you should not see this because you will get confused. Why? I gave slash 16. This is what actually I configured. Because it shows 32, you should not get confused. What it says is for this link, this is the actual. So it's masking it fully. So by seeing 32, you should not think that I I put 32 bit address. No, I did not. I did not say two five five two five five two five five two five five. I said two five five two five zero zero. I said only slash 16. Did you get the point why I'm asking you to ignore the L now? Yes, sir. It was a bit confusing, but uh, yeah, sometimes you just have to pay attention to which one it's which one it shows connected. Ah, only the connected because the 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 purpose of a routing table is to route the packet to network and after reaching the destination the local connected LAN will be a LAN switching based on MAC address and that's not going to be routing so 
In olden days, if you see the routers, they will not have this L in any routing table. Anyway, I do not want to get into this now. It's, it's not necessary. Let's focus on only the thing that we have to talk. We got three networks and there are three routes. Just ignore L and C. There will be three C. Three networks, three C. That's what we need. Now, next is I'm going to go to route two and configure IP address. But this time, you know, I'm going to use my notepad. Look at this. Because all three routers have got a Lubeck interface and two physical interface. Instead of typing again, 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 the same command, you can create a template and do slight alteration and paste it like this. Enable the configure. Say, for example, I'm configuring this for route two. So I'll say IP space address to that to that to that two. Interface of zero slash zero. Now share IP space address to that to one dot zero dot two. Interface F zero one. Dot two dot zero dot two. This is what I was telling you. I now in router two, all the host portion will be two. In router three, all the host portion will be three. In router one, all the host portion will be one. <coughs> and in the write to memory is to save. So I just copy this and paste it on router two. Um, After which, oh no, I put it on wrong road. Did I put it on wrong road? No. Uh, road one. Well, road one. Sir, I can't hear you. You don't hear me? Hello. Using Notepad makes our work easier. Did you see that? I put all the IP address, necessary IP address on the uh, yes, sir. notepad. On this notepad, I have said enable config T interface loopback zero and if F00. I just copy this and I paste it on router two. Now for router three, all that I need to do is just change the IP address. Here it is going to be 3.3.3.3 and F00 will be 13.3. F01 will be 32.3. That's it. So this makes our job easier. Now I'm expecting two neighbors. After I configure EIGRP, we have not started configuring EIGRP. After I configure EIGRP, I'm expecting two neighbors on each router. Yes, sir. Let us start from router three. Router EIGRP, one and red, or any number, but make sure you keep the same number of other routers. I'm saying network, if you find anywhere three, run EIGRP, which means I'm only focusing on the first octet. So in router three, Lubeck interface will be now running EIGRP. If you want to verify, I can show you. Show IP EIGRP interface. Now, currently we have said only network three, which means interface Lubeck will be running EIGRP under autonomous system number 100. Now, if I go and add another one, like network 10, see, when I say network 10, there are two interfaces that has got network 10 in the first token. Am I right? Yes, sir. So if I, if I simply hit enter, 
EHRP will be running on two interfaces. What are they? F00 and F01. Correct. Yes. But if I yes. do not want EHRP to run on F00, what I need to do, I need to say 10.32. Uh, you have to just enter the IP address, no, I, the network 10.32.0.0. And then wildcard mask is for two octaves. You got it? Yes. Now let's go yes. and verify EHRP will be running now only on these two interfaces, F01 and uh, Lubeck, but not on F00 because we said only if these two matches you should run. Yes. Now sir. what I'll do is instead of doing like that, I'll remove this by saying no in the front, and now I'm going to simply say network 10. Now both yes, the sir. interface will be running EHRP. Let's check. Show IP EIGRP interfaces. You see? When I simply say 10, it runs both on F00 and F01 because both have got the first octet 10. And we have not written any wildcard mask, which means it will be by default slash 8. We can focus only on first 8 bits. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Let us go to other routers and enable EHRP. Now I finish R3, I'll go to R2. Router EHRP. Can I put 110? No, sir. No, it won't form neighbor. It has to be the same. Same, that is why we call this autonomous system number. A network two. This is also possible. You are you are saying. If you find all four octets, two, 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 only then you run EHRP. Right now, which interface will be running EHRP, you know? In R2, it's only to Lubeck zero. Correct? Yes, yes. So the mask on the interface is 32. Here also I am masking that much, not necessary to match, but I'm just so, showing you that this is also another option. Network 10, 0, 0, 0, boom. See, the neighborship is established with router 3. Router 3 is also in this autonomous system 10, and it is dual algorithm that is used to form this new HSNC. Now, we have not completed the other router. Let's complete this other router. On router one, I'm going to say router EHRP 100 network 1.0.0.0 network 10. You'll find now two neighbors, one is with router two. So on R1, it should be 1.1.1, .1 right? Yes, that's right here. The loop back R1. Yes. That's why I said one. Okay. All right. If I if I don't write wildcard must then it will just match the first up and run. So I have oh, okay. two neighbors, you see. Um but there's something issue. There's some issue with subnet mask. Show run interface F0 slash one. I have said 10. I should say 10.30. I have said 10.11. Okay. So, you understand what mistake I have done? The network you uh, gave to uh, 11 instead of 13. Okay. Now this will rewrite and neighbor will. Okay, neighbor is established now. New agency. Now let's verify. Show IP EIGRP neighbor. You see, you have two neighbors. And then show IP EIGRP topology. This is the topology table. See, to reach 10.30, you've got two routes. Both are successors. See, 10.32, you can use this path as well as the upper path. Am I right? Same metric. You can use this path or you can use this path to reach this network. Yes or no? 
yes, right sir. in the middle. You got two paths. So router one says that you got two paths. One via router two, ten or twelve or zero or two. Another via router three. That's why I put the last number three on router three. And you see the advertised distance and the FD. The selected FD is this. All the route that is having 30 dots, it's at 3720. 307. Oh, in another word, 30,720. Is considered a success. Success. So, for router one, there are two paths to reach 10.32. Likewise, for router three, there will be two paths to reach which network. From router three, which network will have two paths to reach? For router three, there are two paths to reach 10.12, isn't it? Yes. So let's go and verify. Router 3, router 3, router 3 here. Show IP, IGRP topology. You see, you've got two routes to reach 10.12. For others, you don't have two routes. And if you check the routing table, you will have two routes for the network 10.12. You see, D means dual algorithm. EIGRP routes are shown as D because it is dual algorithm. And you have you got two parts. And what is this 90? Administrative distance of EAGRP. It is not advertised distance, it is administrative distance. What is the administrative distance of RIP? 120. Uh, and what is this one? This is one is feasible distance. The successor value. See here you will not see advertised distance. In the routing table, you will not see advertised distance. Where will you see the advertised distance? In the topology table, you will see advertised distance. The feasible distance followed by advertised distance. Whereas in the routing table, you will see only the feasible distance. So when I put route, you will see feasible distance. All right, the three tables, no? Show IP, AGRP neighbor. Show IP, AGRP topology. Show IP, AGRP or show IP route and if you want to see only EIGRP learned route you say EIGRP so this this routing table is short and sweet it shows only the rows and routes that are learned from via with the help of EIGRP okay so do this and see